I want to play and uh, who nobody <laughs> yesterday I had an argument with uh, the director at Doordarshan because uh, Guru Charan and I are recording for Doordarshan in August and um, their question was uh, your piano is not grading illa abdina. this uh, A grading B grade C grade whatever um, and then she herself says you can grading pannalam, but you will have to grade yourself because in the piano ke grading is not in the scheme la. so and I like that because I think the only person who sets benchmarks for me is me and uh, you know that's a, both an that's advantage a and and that's, that's an advantage that's and a disadvantage it means that of course i get to say i am the first in a class of one but uh, but the thing is that that has opened up the possibilities of the people i can collaborate with i can tell you last year oh why last year this week okay i played kut four days ago um, I played in Swati Tirunal College, I just explained I did Carnatic music and Western classical music. Uh, I think day before, yesterday I played at Madras Club and I played uh, MSV. Um, this coming week I'm going to Liverpool and playing uh, Western classical music. Um, and all of it is possible, it's 88 keys, right? As many possibilities as 88 keys bring and uh, I always say that I live in a world of black and white, but I'm able to create worlds of color. So, awesome. you know. Since you are an accomplished uh, pianist, uh, very long time back itself, could you not have made uh, that kind of a career as a musician in, uh, in the US. New York itself uh, by playing for a Yanni or for the Chris TV Wonder or for somebody else by which you can earn in dollars and not to play in Madras for Anjukum Patakum? I think for every artist there is a there is an artistic spirit. There is an artistic. Uh, there's an artistic truth, okay? There is a career truth which we have spoken about, but there's an artistic truth. And for me, the artistic truth is that I'm unquestionably Tamilian and I'm unquestionably from Chennai. And um, different people have different views about these things, but my view is that I feel very truthful. You know, I've lived so much away from the truth for nearly 30 years that I feel very truthful when I'm close to the source of Carnatic music. I feel very truthful when I'm close to the source of Tamil film music. I feel very truthful when I'm close to anything that is Chennai. And that has been my life. Uh, it's not, I'm not saying this as a manifesto. Uh, yes, I'm very proud to be from Chennai. But I think this is where my energy works the best. And nowadays, thanks to the fact that travel has become so easy and of course, thanks to the internet, we are all known all over the world. Uh, last year, for example, at um, London South Bank Centre, I played Mozart. So people are getting to know who I am and what I do wherever it is in the world and you know once you start that flow more and more people will come it's like uh, when one door opens uh, many other doors will keep opening beyond that so uh, maybe at, uh, at the point of inflection when I was coming back that might have been a valid question to ask but now that for the last 10 to 11 years I have established myself working the hard way I don't feel that a need anymore because I am able to talk to all those, not Stevie Wonder, but I am able to talk to people uh, abroad, I keep collaborating with different people, I keep travelling, I keep working with, the, I mean two years ago Guru Charan and I went and collaborated with the Korean ensemble, I mean we are doing different things all the time, that I don't feel that anymore and anyway, I have to charge the dollars in the dollars, I have absolutely no problem in charging in dollars anywhere. Um, this is a question for both of you. The blissful people, both Avis and Anil. See, when you talk about bliss, there is this moment of bliss. There is some kind of bell does it ring and lightning goes on or something like that. Second thing is, bliss, does it happen only once? Or when you're going down the street, you find another something coming in, you can more blissful or, you know, there's some kind of a thing which uh, you can recognize. You know, is there something like that? You want to answer it first? Okay, I'll, I'll answer it first. I, to me, bliss is an awakening. It's, it's an inner awakening. And when, when everything around you can be the way it is, and most of it is challenging, and that's where I found it, I sat one day and I told Vani that all I want to do all my life is to just address audiences and inspire them to happiness. There, that that awakening, and we were sitting among ruins. You know, we were we were sitting among not even ruins. I think sambal or rubarikla. But we were talking about happiness, and 
I think that awakening is what I call bliss. Now, it doesn't happen like a thunderbolt. I think we evolve into it. And we have to fail. We have to fall in love. We have to resurrect to evolve in life. You know, it is a process. And uh, that's why it probably took me 35 years to come to that point. Now, you know, there was this, there was this moment I was, we were doing a workshop for Apollo hospitals. And uh, this was in 2008, the beginning of our, you know, the clarity of February 2008, the clarity that we were bankrupt came to us around that time. And there was this, I won't name the bank, but there was this banker who landed up in my office, threatened my staff, and came to the hotel where we were working with, and Dr. Pratap Reddy was inside the room, there was a tea break, and he comes into the room and seeks me out and threatens me with dire consequences. And I'm saying, I'm, how dare you come here without an appointment? I mean, this is, this is my client's place. You know, you're spoiling my reputation. You know, we have a slinging match uh, between the two of us. It goes on for 20 minutes. I was not even half as evolved as I am today at that time. And I was dealing with crisis. And he said, I'm going to get the cops, this, that, everything. And then I go into the, I'm completely shaken, visibly shaken. Vani gives me a hug. She says, go in. You know, it's time. The tea break has been overdue. You know, Sunita Reddy comes out. She's asking Avis and Vani, are you, are you guys okay? Is something wrong? And I go in and I deliver a session, the rest of the session, as if nothing has happened. And that's when I realized that it is possible to be happy despite your circumstances when you do what you love doing. So to me, that is bliss. I think it's like a homing pigeon thing. That is, it's uh, definitely I'm not happy on a minute to minute basis and a daily basis. In fact, my wife is sitting right behind you. She'll tell you how much I crib on a daily basis <laughs> about various different things. But um, I'll tell you something at the end of the day when I have a piano uh, that I have uh, and I can play it or if I'm on stage and I'm performing uh, for those of you who have seen my performances, I usually close my eyes and I'm playing. I'm not even conscious of who's there or who's not there. That's when I return to that bliss like a homing pigeon. It's um, off stage, life is miserable sometimes. You know, the fights that we have to fight. I mean, try getting an Aadhaar card. Um, <laughs> you know, the, uh, life is miserable usually. It's not, uh, I mean, just because you get so many claps on stage and you go, go to the registrar office and try to get a certificate out, you're brought back to your knees in exactly two minutes. No, no, no. That's, that's how we talk, right? But when you go back to your music, you, know, you can be playing by yourself. I wrote that, I think, on Facebook once. You'll be playing at 6 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes my wife knows I'll get out, get off bed, and I'll go at 2 o'clock in the night, and I'll be playing something because some inspiration struck me at that time. Though that's the bliss. That's the You live all the other moments, and you put up with everything else so that you experience that moment. And you have that thing to return to. It's like faith. It's like God. It's unbasivam. You know, it's it's that that is the God that is always and uh, Aruna Sairam told me this once and I completely agree with her. We musicians are very lucky, you know, because whenever we play or we sing just to ourselves, not on stage, we are given God in a plate. You know, you just shut your eyes and you can forget about the rest of the world and you can just play for yourself. And you are getting a straight direct communication to, you know, I'm a huge believer and you know, you get a straight away communication above and that's your bliss. Everything else you can put up with makes that that one moment makes it all worthwhile. And uh, you know, economic reality, you have <laughs> so many problems we all face. Um, it's, it's very, hard. very hard. But it makes I think it makes it worthwhile. I mean it sometimes I do agree too. I do agree. It's very difficult to quantify, but it's it's very, very worthwhile when you follow that thing. You know, the, the, the challenge is that the whole world is, is herded and is heading in the direction of uh, economic realities. And there, there are few people who, out of choice, out of accidents, stumble upon what gives them joy. Now, the majority point to this minority and say, you know, but the, but the minority knows the value of what the majority will never find. 
No, but it's also the other thing we were discussing about the definitions of success and failure, which is uh, unfortunately in today's society is determined by the number of likes you have on Facebook, for example, or um, you know, or you can uh, the number of followers you have on Twitter, or all this kind of nonsense. You know, uh, I was very shocked um, that I was sitting in a <laughs> in a meeting with some uh, members of a very prominent music organization in the city, which I will not name. and one of the gentlemen tells me the the how they decide on who gets evening ticketed concert versus morning one of the things they look at is how many fans they have on facebook and i said that's ridiculous because you can pay for and get those people i mean i for example have 500 fans in turkey whom i've never met <laughs> i'm sure they don't exist right um in the madrila so the success definition and failure definition when the unfortunately romba codified in our community now you know uh there's it's almost like linear progression right when you are young you're taught that you you take the science group you get into iit um you go to iim and then you work for an mnc and this is how much you get and by the age of 40 you should have two houses you should have so many cars it's like well arranged pieces of furniture or a sofa rendu armchair or a teapot pakkathla tv inga radio vella ponaka toyota car idellame should be like well ordered pieces of furniture and for some god forsaken reason nee kanakala makku nu vechukonga ஓகே அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு ட்ராமா நான் பார்த்தது கிடையாது நம்ம சொசைட்டியில் அந்த மாதிரி இன்னும் இட்ஸ் ஆல் யூ நோ அ மெடிக்கல் அட்மிஷன் சீட் அஸ் யூ நோ காஸ்ட் லைக் அ க்ரோ அண்ட் க்ரோ அண்ட் தேர்ட்டி ஃபைவ் லேக்ஸ் அண்ட் திங்ஸ் லைக் தட் தீஸ் டேஸ் அண்ட் இஸ் தட் இஸ் தட் ரியலி சக்ஸஸ் ஐ மீன் தட் யூ நோ யூ அட் தி ஏஜ் ஆஃப் எயிட்டீன் ஆர் நைன்டீன் யோர் பேரண்ட்ஸ் ஹேவ் டு செல் எவ்ரி திங் தே ஒர்க் ஃபார் அண்ட் தென் கெட் யூ இன் டு மெடிக்கல் காலேஜ் ஸோ தட் யூ கோ அண்ட் பிகம் சம்படி எல்சஸ் சம்சா ஐ மீன் இஸ் இட் ரியலி ரியலி இஸ் தட் சக்ஸஸ் ஆர் ரியலி இட்ஸ் நாட் which is a hostel which is costly right. and the books of course we could ill afford the library was there or we borrow from seniors this is a medical education has gone into somebody do something about it right when they come do you think they'll go to the village and work exactly none of them i worked in a very very bad village where they don't even have salt or milk for one year mm. near bangalore god for sake there's nothing and the people will get up only at 11 come and the hospital will have nothing but be complex how can i treat them exactly government nobody bothers about it my colleague who is supposed to ask for the supply he said why why all this bring trouble he is such a sort no, of which person which is exactly which is why i'm saying that if uh, if you're going to be spending a crore on your education not a bit worth your it. life becomes about how to earn that back it's really not, not about that. once you start earning that then all you want to do is keep earning yeah. more yeah. Then, not only you then you're trapped in the insecurity of of the economic reality my first pay of uh, 400 I, I? rupees 400 wonderful time listening to you, both of you my question to you anil is um how much of a role did family play in your life uh, if your parents did not support your decision to continue with music considering that you know you said you didn't you were not really earning much at that point in time would you still have gone ahead because it gave you bliss i would have still gone ahead but uh, my family has been 100% supportive all the time so uh, that has been a great factor in enabling that to happen and i think the fact that we were all i think my cousin here will also agree we were all given a lot of freedom growing up on the kind of choices that we made uh, in fact one of the first conversations that my wife and i had she i i told her i said i am a musician there will be times when i don't earn and she said why do you need to worry about that because i do that you know that's so awesome. i think that's extremely important uh, if some of us are lucky enough to have it it's extremely important i'm sure you had vani support yes, all the time so you know Absolutely. Absolutely. And vice versa. Now, two people are equally partial. Can you pass the mic here? Thank you. Thank you very much. The session was, I think, very moving is how I would put it. Um, as a storyteller, I just wanted to ask you, both of you, I've read your book, uh, Fall Like a Rose Petal, and it moved me to no end. You have opened yourself, your personal stories. Uh, to all of us who are pretty much strangers did you have any hesitancy in opening up you you want me to take it first i think it's a beautiful question i i believe that we all restrict or restrain from telling our stories because we think we'll become vulnerable i believe 
that just like the t cab driver in New York, a stranger, cold American environment, not just physically cold, but you know, we think America is you know cold socially also. Uh, said you know, forget about it, take care of yourself. Uh, Vani and I have found that whenever we have been most vulnerable, when we have worn our life on our sleeve, the milk of human kindness has flown into our life again and again and again and again and again. So I have absolutely no hes hesitation. Yesterday, we were at a party where at ITC Grand Chola, we must have been the only couple there who didn't have a car. Uh, and the gentleman that had invited us for the party was, was a former client of ours and had propositioned to me to bail me out uh, had propositioned to me the, the, a, a, a job offer of one crore per annum. And I refused to take it. And when he said, why don't you want to take it? I said, I can't work professionally with you. We, I would be killing my joy to work with you. And I don't want to do it. And he completely understood it. He didn't, he didn't think I was being insulting and I was being egotistic. And he called us to the party yesterday. We owe him money. But we were, we were treated with, with, with the same amount of dignity that everyone else was treated there. So absolutely, and in fact, I will encourage you all, tell your stories, share it. The sharing makes the, you know, the whole world much more beautiful. You know, that's what I believe. Yeah, ma'am. Um, what is the job offer and is it still <laughs> <in your mind? laughs> it, was a, it was a job offer to, to head, uh, head branding a, a line that we had completely given up. No, anyway, I'm just kidding. No, uh, not at all. I think uh, you've said it all. Uh, let me not say, repeat the same things. It, uh, I just want to ask you uh, both of you a question. See, does a person experience this bliss only in the case of fear of failure? Um, no, I'll answer this actually technically. I actually have an answer to this for the first time. Um, Throughout your life, I think there are always markers and there are always uh, clues on what you should be doing. Okay, We are mentally and sometimes academically structured not to notice these clues, not to understand. Um, you know, there will be, when you think back to your life and you think back to some of the crazy ideas you might have had when you were young that you wanted to do, and think back to the first time you shared that idea with somebody, Almost always you would have like a positive reaction for that idea from whoever you spoke to about it first. Okay. Um, but somewhere along the line, we would have seen somebody else uh, not doing it. So, of course, of failure. But more than that, it's conditioning, which tells you not to notice these very, very obvious things when it is there. In my case, music was always in my face all the time. It wasn't even something so hidden away, you know. Despite which I did not heed it, which shows how much I allowed myself to get... Uh, brainwashed into thinking something else about my life, right? So, uh, I don't think it's only fear of failure. I think it's conditioning. I think it's also that uh, somewhere our education system, I know it's easy to criticize these things, but somewhere our education system has failed in not enabling um, us as young people to think creatively. We are being taught to think in structure, which is structure is extremely essential. Uh, and I couldn't have asked for better schooling myself, but I think the system itself, if you look at CBSE now or ICSE now, the amount of load on children, right? There are teachers here who can attest to this the amount of load on teachers. There is no room in it for people to do creative exploration or understand imagination, understand what they can do, what potential they have. And the first moon wise that 16 which is a very critical time of your life you know your mind is growing at that time brain is growing physically also that if it is not embedded in the dna at that time it's very hard to find it later on very very hard and some of us are lucky enough that we find it before it's too late um, even though we fail now that fear of failure you go and sit and play sometimes you take the risk of people walking out on you, you take the risk of people panning you you take the risk of the fact that you'll give it your best shot 
and yet the only report you will hear of your performance will be that somebody who got up and said romma nanna vaascharu but he was so rude on stage edano sambandhame illama da irukku you put up with it every day you know but you don't get you don't get into failure so i think it's fear of failure conditioning and uh, learning environment or the lack of one which i think uh, prevents you from looking at these things i have suresh here suresh kumar swami here who quit his job uh, with tech mahindra to to follow his bliss and today he tells me that he has joined ma sanskrit in, oh wonderful you know at vivekananda college so he is driven down all the way from vellore so i don't think there is a fear of failure uh, i think there is a there is a desire to be joyful you know and to be in that uh, drenched in that state uh, the question more probably to evis if you can uh, take it the one of the points that i wanted to ask you probably covered as part of the i just complete an answer about music already being there and you had to take it up at that point of at some point of time whereas my question was either for 20 something who is you know uh, looking at what career to take based on my strength or for somebody who has been in the corporate or in some other field wanting to find their bliss so that they let go whatever they've been doing and find the new one based on you know conversations that you've had as part of the series or you know what would you recommend uh both i think if uh, the first responsibility we parents have is to our children uh in encouraging them to break free from this typical uh you know engineering medicine law uh, madness you know uh, i think each child has has got an innate uh, understanding an intuitive understanding of of what what is that child's bliss and i think as parents it's our responsibility to unravel that in If fact i I, that, i read a, a, a statistic that 90% of the jobs that our children are going to be doing haven't been invented yet um and i think that's so true that's so true that's so true in fact on our show in september we will be having uh, uh, gen y you know we we calling the gen y kids uh, who have dared to uh, you know forsake this economic reality and pursue their bliss so as far as the uh, the mid career choice is concerned always remember your life is a limited period offer how long more are you going to postpone this so trapped within you yesterday we met a young man at that party i mean he's gone to the us he studied uh, uh, you know he studied engineering or whatever and he's come he used to run a rock band in chennai you know the, and he says he's given up music and i said boy why do you why do you want to give it up you know come why can't you why can't you run it and he's come talk to me <laughs> come talk to anil yeah so i think life is a limited period offer if you are if you're postponing it you may not be alive to live it no and the, the okay and there is another pernicious set of lies that starts on so once you follow your bliss and you found your bliss so we found this bliss right um this pernicious lie of success definitions catches up with you even in those things so as a musician um and i see one of the young musicians who i mentor quite often um you are taught to believe that uh, being a successful musician is equal to so many concerts per year so much of you earn so many awards that you are supposed to get so many fair followers on facebook so da, 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 da. when you are name is mentioned in conversations people should already know who you are da, 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 da. and um the, it's enough to make your stomach full without even eating that <laughs> that many set of assumptions and who's fa- you know and especially in the chennai carnatic context i find um they'll say etana kacheri i'm performing this season how many uh, so many concerts okay how many people come to your concerts so many people how many people stayed till the end mm-hmm. how much money did they give so none of the questions are about what are you playing none virtually none neither if i go abroad and you know i i perform and what happens is that um they invariably be before the performance there will be people who talk to me obviously don't know who i am and they'll they'll say oh piano va huh? you've come along with the troupe ah okay okay some chords you're going to play very good my son is also learning piano i want him see uncle's playing no after concert you show him your pieces and then after the concert they'll be coming and touching my feet and um, and i i'm neither affected by bhagavad gita madri i'm neither affected by this nor by that the, in fact the prior i'm affected by because i get annoyed 
right <laughs> the last thing you want to deal with before you go on stage is a stupid person i'm i'm honest about this it's a stupid person it puts you off because if you have humanity in you if you have any form of compassion in you you know that somebody is just about to perform on stage you're not indulging them in a conversation about what your child is learning <laughs> or anything for that matter in the sense in a putting down kind of way it's very putting down you know a musician once somebody told me um at a function at the very same itc grand chola that i played some corporate function one lady he was very drunk and she's telling me and i we're finishing our concert at about 9 o'clock this lady comes and says keep playing that's what you're paid for come on okay you have to deal with that kind of nonsense because um you know and i came down the lady apologized i mean obviously somebody <laughs> went and told her you can't talk like this and he's so and so and she, you know the first thing she tells me she doesn't apologize straight away she says i didn't know you were somebody so famous i'm sorry wow so <laughs> Am I supposed to be given respect only on the basis of the fact that I'm world famous in Chennai? <laughs> okay? Or should I not be given respect inherently for what I do? Is the question. So, these are all success definitions which have been set up. Yedi edutundalo, right? If I say I'm going to be the world's best garbage cleaner, how many tons do you handle every year? <laughs> Nobody asks you what made you do that. You you notice your own conversations, the conversations people have with you. This is the first questions people ask. how much money do you make out of it how if you are a musician in fact in delhi one famous organizer i'm talking to him at a party and his his first question is oh if you are so famous how come i haven't heard of you wow that's so what can i what what can i do about that you know is that my fault <laughs> you know so success definitions don't get caught up in those things that's that's all i wanted to say and because ram is sitting here i want to tell this to you as well because it's a topic that keeps coming up especially ram is uh, is a stand up okay ram is a music student and he's come all the way from england to learn carnatic music here okay, okay? um and he's at the cusp of deciding whether to follow his bliss or not which is why this thing is directed at him is that uh, especially in his group of of people the biggest thing is to perform in london is to perform in darbar am i right is is a certain set of success definitions which i don't know how it got set up for them it got set up for them right and uh, a group of us have been trying year after year to break those myths for them and trying to tell them that the only purpose of learning music is learning music okay is not because it this will happen that will happen this this because of this will happen you know this causality right because of music you'll become famous because of music you'll become rich how rich will you become how many concerts will you get how many countries are you known by what does your wikipedia say what does your facebook friend say what does your facebook fan say how many people are coming and touching your feet how many people are making you touch their feet all of this is irrelevant you know at the core of it all is just joy is just music that's it in your case music but right. you know in in everybody's case it's just joy do what makes you happy so that will be the last question for the evening and i need to do a wrap up just to uh, manage sure. time hello sir this is i have been in i'm in a similar position like you were at 30 something but mine is very different since i am more of an athlete and i'm not in music music has been more of chennai's flavor and i don't fit the bill for anything being a chennaiite so one thing that has kept me active of exercising this is my 10th year of consistent exercise after so many breaks in my teens in my early 20s till now and that has been a big thing even in these tough times i'm going through the sad part is others still judge you and they still judge me and they quantify everything that much that you lose faith at a point of time but you still want to be there yeah it the quantification of success is killing the passion you want to do but only if you let it that's it right so don't the don't let it get to you that's it the, the, don't let it was when you enjoy doing what how can anybody else judge you that's right one. they don't know your pain they don't know your process i'm sure in this group of people there are a lot of people who've heard me play before probably didn't know the story not that it's going to make them enjoy my music less or more but suddenly there is a certain empathy of being human and and having everybody goes through these things sometimes when you are in the media and things like that and people read about you or people come to your concerts they think your life is so charmed that everything has gone well avan pare piano vechindi evlo concerts varudhu pare he must be having contacts in the hindu he must be having contacts in music academy 
you know i have had people come and tell me these kinds of things you ask my wife or my mother how much i crib about the fact that nobody in the hindu notices me and nobody in this i'm telling you that it's if you let it affect you you're dead so i want to sum uh, you I, know, I, I, i was actually going to add to that as well eating food you can find bliss in food or Absolutely. simple things like that you know just your simple cup of tea i don't mean that i'm i'm a glutton uh, no not that way i'm saying you um i've uh, i'm very influenced by tichnathan i don't know yeah, how Tichnathan, many people yeah. have read tichnathan tichnathan is this vietnamese monk and uh, beautiful beautiful writing because it's very simple it's written in no sentence is more than eight words long or seven words long very simple by the way you're the first person to pronounce his name right really yeah. <laughs> uh and one of the things he says is when you eat your food he said how are you focusing on your food Mine. meaning that most of the time when we are if you look at it nowadays we are watching tv when we are eating you're on your phone you're having a conversation with somebody else whatever you're doing we are also eating on the go we are not you're not attending to the food right uh the reason i wanted divya to stay is because divya is a yoga instructor and i think that's one of the things they keep saying at different points of time is are you attending to the moment you know that particular moment are you attending to music or the rumba and athleticism i can agree with all of these things there are all these passionate things when you do these things it forces you to attend to the moment when i'm playing on the piano i can only focus on that i can't be playing on the piano and thinking about ah neethi ki vanda and the bill katla naalik i have to call this person i mean i'm going to lose my my groove on stage if i do that you know you've got to attend and that's the same reason i'm coming back to exam writing when you write exams it makes you focus on the moment you can't you cannot think about neethi kana panna naalik kana panna you know when you for those of you who have taken gmat and sats and whatever one of the things that they tell you is think only about the question you are writing at that point of time don't think about the previous answer don't think about the next answer right if you do that you'll get it right so thank you let me wrap up uh, you know a, a quote that comes to my mind is uh, uh, the one that jalaluddin rumi the uh, the persian poet said he said why are you crawling when you have wings why are you spending your life crawling when you have wings so go fly let go and fly so rumi's you know perspective is very very empowering i think most of us uh, to earn money is not a sin uh, you know it's very important to have money and i can tell you that from experience of not having it you know so uh, but money cannot buy you the life that you need to live it can get you things but it can't get you people and we all know that you know and it can't give you give you the joys so i would say it's not red bull that gives you wings it's oh bliss God. that gives you wings okay hey <laughs> wes i think we are we are both united in bad humor also <laughs> Vani and I are also launching a, another event series from the 1st of August at um, Inco Center in Boat Club area and this series is called Happiness Conversations it's a quarterly event and it opens on 1st of August and uh, we any of you would like to join us please join us there uh, Happiness Conversations focuses on talking to people who have faced life's tragedies challenges stoically and our first guest uh, for 1st of august is a bilateral amputee who lost her arms uh, a lady by the name malvika ayer um, i can assure you you won't find a happier person on the planet than malvika and our next guest for bliss catchers uh, one of the guests is uh, theater nishas uh, bala balakrishnan and bala will be joining us on 22nd of august which is a saturday at 7 pm we may have an additional guest that evening uh, we're still finalizing dates so uh, look forward to having all of you with us again thank you thank you so much good evening just half a second more i just want to thank uh, ashwin and uh, team odyssey uh, you guys are wonderful thank you for all the help and uh, just so you know uh, odyssey puts up this uh, you know the must read for all the bliss catchers so if you want to check it out 